the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Episode 219, Banditos MC. Today we're going to explore a part of the 1% nation and the Big Five. That's right. Well, the U.S. government calls it the Big Four, but we know it's the Big Five because they forgot to include the Mongols. But we didn't. Today we are going to talk about one of the biggest of the Big Five. And it is a 1% outlaw motorcycle crew. And, of course, it governs a huge region, not only in the United States, but in the world. How do you get in contact with us? It's easy. RadarCop.com will take you to the website where you can hear all our episodes from 1 to 219. And RadarCopNation.com our official website where you can get more information of upcoming episodes and more about us because it's our official website. Social media, we're on everything but the little bird. Twitter, we're no longer on there. Or uh, LinkedIn, we got rid of that nonsense also. But you can find us on any social media outlet out there either by Raider Cop, Raider Cop Podcast, or Raider Cop Nation. How do you hear the podcast? Well, wherever you get your podcast. You can find us in all settings of podcast. Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, and the list goes on. We are available. You got Uncle Joe's gun You've had it in your closet for a long time, and you're wondering, should I get this thing fixed or buy a new one? But when you go to buy a new one, the gun shelves are empty because one of the biggest gun salesmen in in the history of this country is still making sales today. That's right. Joe Biden and Barack Obama have led this country on gun sales, and as a result... They're flying off the shelf. So it's time now to take Uncle Joe's gun. And you might bring it in to make it look brand new. There's so many things you can do with guns today, especially if it's a clock and a Smith & Western. They can make these things run smooth, run accurately, and you won't even recognize it. It'll be so pretty. Pistol Pete the Gunsmith, we highly recommend down in Miami. And if you're not in Miami, don't panic. All you have to do is find an FFL dealer. And they will ship your gun to Pistol Pete. The gunsmith, once Pistol Pete is finished, will ship that bad boy right back where you shipped yours. You pick it up there, you won't even recognize that thing when you take it out of the box because it will be brand new. Pistol Pete the gunsmith, highly recommended. Also, Kilo Sierra, if you're in the New Jersey area, if you're in the Philadelphia area, and you want to get good gun training, I highly recommend Kilo Sierra, NRA instructor, knows his tactics, knows his weaponry, and I highly recommend it. If you also are in Florida and you want to get some lessons, uh, look me up on Raider Cop. Nation at gmail.com. Send me an email and I'll send you back information. Florida is a big state, so if it's not in my area, I'll hook you up with somebody that may be able to help you. But nevertheless, get yourself trained, fix your guns up, get that insurance. USCCA. I've told you about it a hundred times. You don't want to go out in the street unprotected. You want protection because that's the name of the game that there is today. The USCCA gives you unquestionable amount of protection when you're out there and you're out and about. If you have to take that gun out of the holster and the lawyers are going to come sick, you know, you 
want protection. So you trained hard. You got a beautiful gun. Pistol Pete uh, hooked you up. Now all of a sudden, you don't have any insurance, any protection, if you have to use that thing. So I highly recommend the USCCA. Just It's as easy as grabbing your phone, your smartphone, and texting uh, RADER, R-A-I-D-E-R, to 87222-87222. That will get you on the road to become a member of the USCCA, or you can just click on the link that's on the bottom of the show notes, and that'll get you started as well. You know, we live in these dangerous times, and this is why we have to have all these things, uh, insurance, uh, good training, and, of course, a good, clean gun. So keep that in mind. All right, some uh, law enforcement news. Officers in the uh, Philadelphia area, uh, black officers in the Philadelphia area are endorsing a DA And they're breaking ranks from the union because the union back in uh, 2020 endorsed President Trump. So this is uh, some misbehavior from union members breaking away from what the union recommended, doing their own thing. And they're endorsing uh, Kastner for a DA, which is uh, better, you know, it's like a commie. So that's all you need to know. Again, the brainwashing operation from the Democratic machine is working miracles as blind sheep just follow them and turn the country into communism. But what are you going to do? It is what it is. It's a part of their times. 14,000 applicants in NYPD are signing up for the upcoming test. 29% of those are african American. So a lot of people are starting to wake up and uh, take on the role of a police officer. Now, you know, statistically, we all know that based on, what what was that number, 14,000 applicants, if you're lucky, if you have a pool of 10%, and then from that pool, it might even disintegrate as far as five. So... Although it sounds like a lot of applicants, that doesn't mean all of them are going to get in. So best of luck to all the applicants on their journey to become law enforcement officers in NYPD as the Bolshevik states of woke will hate you even more for it. All right, so uh, now we're going to break into our... uh, Oh, hold on. Wait, I got... Yeah. Now we're going to break into our Bolshevik States of Woke news. Comrade, continue. The Soviet Union will be pleased to offer amnesty to your wayward vessel. The Soviet Union? I thought you guys broke up. Yes, that's what we wanted you to think. Well, in MSN Daily News reports that Uncle Joe and Aunt Camilla have released their tax records. Here are the numbers, $607,336 Uncle Joe made with the the doctor, and uh, they ended up paying a... $157,414 in income tax at a tax rate of 25.9. Aunt Camilla, she made a little bit more than Uncle Joe. She made $1.6 million and uh, almost $1.7 million paid $621,893 in taxes at a tax rate of 36.7. That's uh, California crazy numbers. But here's the question. (laughs) It's not how much you paid. How much is going to come back? If you believe this, we've got some oceanfront property in Las Vegas with nice 
ocean view for you. It's hilarious. Why do they even waste their time publicizing all that crap? You know, it's it's all media hype. It's like, uh, you know, the turkey thing, where they take out the turkey and then the president goes, all right, spare the turkey. It's the same baloney, releasing your tax record. Are you kidding? They, uh, you want to impress me? Release the un- under-the-table envelopes. <laughs> that, that impressed the hell out of me. All right, on some more Bolshevik states of woke news for this week, um... Uncle Joe has $174 billion he wants to spend on electric cars, and the Republican Party is hyperventilating, and uh, so far, no good. Now, Uncle Joe went out to test drive the F-150 new electric car out in Michigan, driving at high speeds, the old man at 80 miles an hour, and uh, it was cool Joe, cool Joe. He just killed the F-150 brand and Ford. I don't know about you, but I'm buying a, a truck in the near future that's built in America. That's why I'm buying a Toyota Tundra built in America. These are F-150s. I think I'm going down south to Mexico again. <laughs> and there's Joe driving the freaking car around. But you never get disappointed with the Bolshevik states of woke. Higher taxes, higher gas prices, higher blood pressure. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Put the mask in your pocket. Take the mask out of your pocket. It is another confusing day, week, and months ahead following Uncle Joe. So... If you're not disappointed enough in this week's shenanigans with Uncle Joe, stay tuned. I'm sure he'll outdo himself next week. As we draw down towards episode 219, today we're going to talk about the Banditos uh, MC, part of that 1% crew. And we've got a lot in store, a lot of information that we're going to have to cover. So we're not really going to get into more Bolshevik news. But, you know, it's all the same. You know, higher gas prices and, you know, Joe, uh, obnoxious people. The reporter's trying to ask him questions, and he's, uh, don't ask me no questions. Uh, Recently, there was another article that uh, he's obnoxious, starts cursing at the White House, he yells at the staff, ah, Uncle Joe, he's a piece of cake. He's a piece of bread, man. Everybody loves Joe. You know, I, before we move on to the word of the week, I just want to say one thing. We know you're out there. We know. We're the ones that voted for Uncle Joe and Aunt Camilla. Come on. Don't be hiding behind the curtain. Come on. I see your shoes underneath the curtain. Come on. Come on out, raise your hand, stick your chest out. Be proud. You voted for the best buffoon in the history of this country. According to the New York Post, as I said last episode, says he's on his way to becoming the worst president ever in the history of the United States. But don't let the Democrats get that in the way of their argument. They'll tell you he is a sunshine. What are you going to do? All right, now we're going to break off to the word of the week. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. 1 Peter 3.12. And you can hear more about what I've read in other episodes as well on A Wall is the name of the series. Now, somebody recently asked me on an email. I can't find it. Well, if you go to the section on the website, RaiderCopNation.com, that says um, uh, future shows or updates, 
let me let me get the exact wording before I get coconuts thrown at me. Current and upcoming shows, and you click on that, you'll see a, a banner will open up, and all the way down, you'll see all the series. Buccaneer series, Think Out of the Box, Train Up, Sidebar series, Roll Call series, Wise Guys series, Guns, and A Wall Monday. And uh, you click on that, and it'll take you to the page where you can hear our episodes covering past verses that we've discussed. So, still in progress. It's still a work in progress. I've got to post. Uh, I think it's a, like what five, five or six more on there. So I think I stopped at uh, one eighty-eight. And what are we on two nineteen? So yeah, got got a couple. I've got to post on there. So. I'll be doing that this coming week. So be patient. We're working on it. And, uh, you know, we're only doing uh, one, uh, two podcasts, I'm sorry, Sunday and Wednesdays a week, opposed to the three. That that, that was a sideshow. Wow. That was a sideshow. But what are you going to do? We're here. And um, we are motivated for today's episode, episode 219, Banditos MC. Boys and girls, we're not going to hold you up anymore because I can hear the bus pulling up. It's time for episode 219. <laughs> Well, according to Webster's Dictionary, Bandido is known as an outlaw, especially of Mexican extraction or origin. Banditos were founded March 4th, 1966, 55 years ago in San Leon, Texas. Part of the one percenters, as I said earlier, part of the big five. The United States Justice Department calls them the Big Four, but we have integrated the Mongols since they went from West Coast to East Coast, that they are part now of that big club, making it the Big Five. Um, The Justice Department hasn't gotten around um, to declaring the Big Five. They're busy right now. You know, they're trying to create Russia story, UFOs. It's very busy, very hectic over at Justice. So they'll get around to it. Just be patient. Founded by Donald Eugene Chambers after he did his uh, service to this country in the Vietnam War. He came back, worked on the docks as a longshoreman, and he had been part of several biker clubs, but it wasn't to his liking, so he took up and created the Banditos. As a result, he even picked a name in after the Mexican bandits that uh, lived by no rules, and he thought that that was just outstanding, especially being in Texas. The organization of the Banditos is currently headquartered in Houston, Texas. As I said, part of the Big Five with a whopping, I hope you're sitting down for this one. How many chapters do you believe that they have? This is an amazing total of 303 chapters in 22 countries with a membership of 2,000 to 2,500 members. A lot of people under the impression when you say chapter, 
you're thinking about each chapter has like two, 2,000 people in it. Chapters can have, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 people. And um, so having 303 chapters, that's a lot of people. In the 1970s, the Banditos uh, took off on their expansion. And it was a difficult road, like all these clubs. They had a starting up period where they had fun. They rode around, they had parties. And then for some strange reason, they all had the same business plan. And um, the Banditos were no different. They started expanding in the 1970s. And the favorite uh, obstacles that they were doing were the patch over. Now the patch over is when the bigger club dominates the smaller clubs and brings them into the fold. No different from all the other big five or big four in this case, they were doing the same thing. But the expansion would run into a war with the Hells Angels especially up in Canada during this era. And we'll go through the the list of episodes that happened. But they tried to patch over, or they did patch over the Rocky Machine up in Canada, trying to expand all the way up there. Long, tedious war. And uh, I was also shocked on how many people had died. But uh, there was a truce uh, with the Hells Angels on that. And really, uh, the Banditos never got what they wanted with regards to Canada. In 2000, 2007, uh, they they, uh, attempted to establish that chapter up in Canada, and as I said, it failed. And uh, that was the era that they were fighting with the Hells Angels. And uh, it failed for a lot of logistic issues also. Um, but mostly because uh, I think they underestimated uh, how difficult Canada would be. And uh, there's a different breed of biker up there. There's a different breed of mafioso up in Canada, too. So uh, I don't think it's unique that the Banditos might have misskipped on that one. I think a lot of people... They think of Canada as you know, peace loving and birds chirping in the background, and they don't think it's going to be an obstacle, and uh, it ends up being an obstacle. Let's read some of the uh, the logos of the banditos because they're very proud in in some of their sayings, and uh, as a result, uh, all of these clubs have you know mottos, of course. And, They mean something to the club. The Banditos uh, are especially known for we are the people our parents warned us about, which is self-explanatory in itself and unique. They also have uh, BFFB, which is Banditos Forever, Forever Banditos. A couple of more. Uh, Cut one, we all bleed. God forgives, banditos don't. Our colors don't run. And lastly, expect no mercy. Membership in the organization. You have to have a Harley Davidson motorcycle. And a recent edition has also an upgrade in their chapter rules or membership rules. Is you can have another American uh, motorcycle. Uh... You know, mostly it was Harley for many, many years. There's no other American motorcycles companies. But today you got Indian and a couple of others. So you can pick and choose. And uh, to a, a lot of one percenters' happiness, not too many uh, really liked Harley Davidson. Uh, you know, Hells Angels' Sonny Barger said uh, in an interview he hated um, Harley's or most of his adult life but it was American made and he had a ride and he did so there you go there are three stages to become a member of the Banditos 
First, you're a hang around, then you're a prospect, and then you go into probation. Chapter president will determine the length of that process. And when that vote happens to bring you in as a full fledged member, everybody in that specific chapter has to f- vote in the affirmative then you're allowed in. One vote no, you're kicked down the road like an old tin can. They are required to attend church, and no, it's not the one that the Democrats want to close. It's a meeting. They call meetings church. It's part of the culture of the outlaws, and so all the clubs are the same, but they're required to go uh, four times a month or once a week, but uh, it says four times a month. And um, as as a result, uh, you know, as an organization as big as they are, you have to have a lot of rules. Another rule that they have is you cannot wear your colors inside a truck or a car. Your colors are specifically to be worn when riding. So they, they're not... Uh, messing that one up at all if you miss a mandatory ride it can cost you your papers of your motorcycle because they will take it memberships are membership is mostly white males and hispanics the united states has 39 chapters located in 16 states and those states are of course, Texas being their main hub and Houston, their headquartered. Louisiana, Missouri, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, New Mexico, Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, Utah, Idaho, Idaho, Idaho Washington, Oklahoma, and Nevada. So they're uh, out and about. You can't say they're not. Support clubs will wear on their jackets the colors of the banditos which is yellow and red so these support clubs will have the yellow and red patch with uh, the words embroidered on it as heart patch so that means that you're a supporter of the banditos now let's go down to some of the issues that they've had in the past started with 19... 83, uh, the banditos end up in a war where one bandito is killed. And again, a lot of these wars are relating to turf and it has a lot to do with the criminal enterprise. You know, sometimes you hear this nonsense about the bottom rocker in the state and, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't uh, drink all the fruit punch when they're handing them out. But that you see, hear that a lot on the media. You see it a lot with uh, so-called experts that talk about it. But but don't don't be fooled. This is all about uh, running an operation in drugs, and uh, as a result, you have to control certain territory and routes. Uh, to make that business su- successful. So that's what it's mostly all about. Now, is everybody a criminal? Remember, we've gone through this. This is our uh, test quiz here. Is everybody, all 2,500 members of the Bandito, are they all criminal enterprise? Can you answer that in the affirmative? And the answer is no, because the United States government can't either. That's how come their Ricos fall apart with these 1% clubs because they're trying to convict people based on association with very little evidence because in Ricos, all you need is two predicate predicate acts to convict somebody. And it's a, a little bit unconstitutional, but that we'll leave that for another show. So starting in 83, they, they end up with their first war uh, where one of uh, Bandito is killed and uh, three uh, turn uh, evidence or they become witnesses, three Banditos, resulting in 23 inv- 
indictments. In 84, the Australian massacre is called. 14-year-old girl is killed and six others. In 94, war breaks out with the Hells Angels in Quebec from 1994 to 2002. And here's the amount of people in the research that I did that I found out that had actually died in this war with the Hells Angels. 1994 to 2002, a whopping 160 people were killed. So, you know, you sometimes you hear in these mob wars uh, how many, you know, died and they fought for so many years and they'll give you a number like, uh, I think it was like four or five on one side and two associates, but 160, that's a lot of people. So that goes to tell you they are playing by different rules. 94 to 97, they had the great Nord, Nordic uh, Biker War with the Hells Angels as well. Now, during that war from 94 to 97, the Banditos would have an alliance with the outlaw MC and uh, against the Hells Angels. Uh, 2006, they also go up against the Hells Angels uh, attempting to open up a branch of up in Canada and uh, that uh, war did not go very well for them either. 2006 Toronto, eight banditos murdered called the Sheedon Massacre. They were shot. Uh, 2014 in a bar fight uh the the shoots out shootouts with various one percent clubs. Twenty fifteen Twin Pikes restaurant episode, better known as the Wacko War. Twenty sixteen arrest of the leadership, president, vice president, sergeant at arms, uh, secretary, all the way down were arrested. Uh, twenty seventeen arrest of uh, Hell's Angels. Uh, arrest of banditos that they killed the Hells Angel in 06. They ended up in 06 uh, killing a gentleman by the name of Anthony Bancher and he was starting a chapter in Texas or attempted to start a Hells Angel chapter in Texas and um, the banditos were not having it and they killed him in 06. And then back in uh, 2017, that case was closed and they found a bunch of banditos guilty of that murder. 2017, New Mexico, Santa Fe, they have a shooting with the Vargos MC, mostly based out in uh, California, but a very violent uh, group as well. 2017, El Paso, three members are... Uh, boss is shot and one person died. So the their bosses or the president, vice president of the chapter and all these people ended up getting shot, but one of them uh, ended up dying. So if we continue uh, to read a lot more on the banditos, just like we've read on the other ones, Mongols, the outlaws, the Hells Angels, the pagans, they're a 1% biker club, so they subscribe to the outlaw theme or the outlaw world, so they all have very similar, if not exact, the same type of edicts as far as attending church, American-built motorcycles, uh, how to become a member of the prospect and that, that error, that time that passes by before you're accepted and you become a full patched member and uh, paying dues and all that stuff. And of course, having their wives, girlfriends, whatever you want to call them, uh, regarded as less than dirt. That's part of the culture also. So we're not going to we, we've done our series 
we we picked up uh, the Mongols, the outlaws, the pagans, the Hell's Angels, and now we close this out with the Banditos. So all our episodes, pretty much, with the exception of dates and certain people that started thing, it's all the same. We're on the same plane for you, on the same premise. So. And we're, you know, we're going to start making that pivot back to Costa Nostra. But when we revisit Outlaw Life again, we're going to talk about specific individuals, how they contributed to the culture and the the criminal groups themselves. So that's uh, what we have coming up. The Banditos, they are notorious in the areas that they hold their territory, especially in Texas. They have a multitude of places around the world that they have chapters other than the United States, Australia, Belgium, Bruni, China, Costa Rica. I mean, how do you have a banditos group in China? But it says China on here. I don't know. Costa Rica, Denmark, England, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Holland, Indonesia, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Malaysia, New Zealand, Norway, Panama, Paraguay, Philippines, Russia, Scotland, Siberia. Imagine being in Siberia and riding on the motorcycle. Boy. Singapore, Spain, Sweden, Thailand, Ukraine, and of course, the United States of America, better known as the Bolshevik States of Woke now. So we read to you the long list of uh, fights and wars and turmoil and all these groups are right around the corner. Enemies of the Banditos, well, it's the 69ers, which are based in New York City. And, of course, because of their affiliation with the Hells Angels, the Banish, the Cold Sacks, the Hells Angels, Iron Order, King Folk, Night Wolves, and Notorious MCs, all enemies of the Banditos. Now, on the enemy side, really, with the exception of the Hells Angels and the Cold Sacks, Iron Order, somewhat, but the real fight is between the Banditos and the Hells Angels. They really don't have too many enemies. And maybe it's because of how tough they are and how big they are. Allies, well, of course, the Mongols are an ally. And we read to you that they are also an ally of, with the outlaws. And uh, there are other negotiations, we'll say, with the pagans and uh, partnerships with the pagans as well. All, all, mind you, against the Hells Angels. So, you know, there's not really much to talk about. They all have these 1% clubs, their uniqueness. Remember we talked about the pagans. What was unique about them, they don't have clubhouses. They are more nomadic, and they meet in members' homes. Unique about the Banditos is how you become a member, and they have that hang-around prospect and then probationary period. So they, some clubs just have prospect, and then you're given, here's your colors. Here, uh, you still have your probationary period, and... Uh, it's an extra layer of security, and they and they use it. So, all these clubs have something very unique about them. But uh, as I said before, they basically all start to sound the same after a while. But fear not, we have more shows coming up. The outlook for the rest of the month. Up next is episode two twenty. A wise heart versus a fool's heart. That's part of our tape segments that we had before. 
and it's going into the AWOL series. Probably about 20 minutes that episode, not really sure, but it, you know, f- just figure less than 30. And uh, taped them a while back, they're, they're very good, and uh, you know, I'm sure they're gonna lift you up. Kilo Sierra is coming the 26th of May. We're gonna sit down, we're gonna discuss Glock 45, and we're not talking about the malt liquor nor the casing or the shell or the bullet or the round. It is the Glock 45 gun specifically made by Glock for a specific industry that myself and Kilo Sierra will talk about. And so the question is, did it work for Glock? That's May 26. And we close out the month of May with If You Die Today, Where Would Your Soul Go? Episode 212. We're doing good. We're moving along. Don't forget, this is a part of the Wise Guy series, The Outlaws. And now we're going to start pivoting in June, going back into Kloshra Nostra world. We left off with the Lucchese crime family, and we're right on point to meet and understand Tony Ducks Corallo. This is the man that succeeded Thomas Lucchese right after his death and uh, the Lucchese family has been uh, not not as of recent but for many years if you look at the history of the Lucchese crime family from 1931 remember that's our point of interest always that's our date of inception and you look all the way to like 1985 when the commission case happened, the Lucchese Cram family is rock solid and uh, they're doing a lot of business. They're up there with the major players like the Genovese crime family and the Gambinos. And, uh, but after that era, uh, 85, 86, things start to go a little bit south for the Lucchese Cram family. So in June, we're going to bring up uh, Tony Ducks Corallo. And uh, then we have a season of Opportunity, episode 224. June 9th, over here, we're doing two shows on uh, Costa Nostra. Vic Amuso, which is the current boss of the Lucchese Crane family. He's hanging on. That's the name of that series. Vic Amuso hanging on, episode 225. Uh, June 13th, If My People. And it's part of the AWOL series. uh, June 16, The Checkout, uh, episode 227. The Checkout is that episode that you're in law enforcement. You know, there was a lot of hoopla when you went into the academy and you graduated. You usually have an academy party. And there's a big hoopla, a lot of celebration, you know. You, you, you pass a difficult stage in, in your life going to the academy. You got paid the badge. And you're about to enter that society of police work. And uh, as a result, the opposite of all that is when it's time to hang up your gloves and say, I'm retiring That's the checkout process with no hoopla. And we're going to talk about that. Episode 227. Uh, Part of the AWOL uh, episodes, June 20th, is he noticed a fig tree but remained hungry. Episode 228. And lastly, June 23, we rounded off with Florida has gone crazy with gun control 229 now you might wait what florida's got gun control well you gotta listen and then you'll 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 see what's going on in florida there's never a dull moment when you're living in the bolshevik states of woke so don't forget folks up next we have uh may 23rd a wise heart versus a fool's heart episode 220 as always 
It is my honor and pleasure to be your host on Radio Cop Podcast. Continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And most importantly, continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out.